Growing up in Australia, one of the things that was always impressed upon me was that we were a brave country. You know, a lot of our national myths are centered around that. And of course, myths are half true, that we were brave. We stood up to authority. We stood up for good things and justice. In our political life, I don't see much evidence of that. But now and then, certain Australians make all those myths come true. And Julian Assange is one of those. I know Julian Assange pretty well now. I see him several times a week in all sorts of situations, discussions about uh, his case here in London and various other things. I find him an extraordinarily brave Australian. And I can't say that about many of my compatriots in the same way. I'm not saying that there aren't brave Australians, but I can't think of any that has really been so unusually brave as Julian. I mean, brave in weathering everything that he has had to go through, as he described it recently, the worst year of his life. Brave in standing up to a superpower. I've had some experience in that myself. So I know a little bit about it. Brave in starting a project that he knew would get him into trouble. The best kind of trouble. The kind of trouble that informs people, that respects their right to know about those who govern them, those who make war in their name. So when he started WikiLeaks, he knew that it was going to be a rocky road. And one of the things that, of course, almost has never come out of the generally appalling media coverage of Julian and WikiLeaks is the reason for WikiLeaks. It had a moral base. It was about justice. It's written, he wrote it on the homepage of the first WikiLeaks. And it wasn't necessarily finally defined, but to use that expression, he nailed his colors and the colors of WikiLeaks to the mast. This was going to be about justice. It was about seeking justice through letting people know what is going on, to letting people know what those who have power of their lives are saying. I can't tell you how brave this is. Many people have tried to do this and failed. Julian has succeeded, actually, because the information that he has got out to people all over the world, has made a difference. We can't exactly quantify the difference. We don't have to. Because information is not necessarily quantifiable. It drips through. It percolates. It gets into people's consciousness. They internalize it. And above all, it gives them the strength and the knowledge and the power to act. And nothing changes in the world without that information. Nothing. It has to come first. And he has become an extraordinary provider of that information. He should be, you know, if we regard the place we were born and grew up in as some sort of special thing, I suppose it is. I'm not sure I'm terribly strong nationalist, but uh, if we are to talk of brave Australians, Australians who have given something to the rest of humanity, then Julian is that person. He deserves, at the very least, the very least, the support of ordinary people right throughout his country. 
I know he's getting it, actually, because I helped to arrange a a big public event in March in Sydney, and the the Sydney Town Hall filled with 2,000 people, 300 were outside. So I know that he has. He's touched he's touched that popular nerve and that Australians do support him, whatever the government does. But what they must do is bring that message of that support to the Australian government so that the government will give him the right that he has, and that is the right to be protected as an Australian citizen by his government because he faces great peril at the moment that he could well if he ends up in Sweden and we don't know if he's going to but if he ends up in Sweden he could be sent on to the United States where he will end up in the kind of conditions that Bradley Manning has had to endure and I'm not saying the two are associated they're not so that prospect awaits him, and it can only be seen off by popular power. People in Australia saying, no, we won't have this. We won't have this happen to our fellow Australian who has served us and the world with such distinction and bravery.